Hey guys, today I am going to be sharing with all of you if the M1 MacBook Pro 2020 is still a viable option in 2023. But wait Sam, I thought the M1 MacBook Pro came out two years ago. Shouldn't everyone wait for the M2 Pro or just straight up buy the M1 Pro? Why does the year of production of the laptop have to matter? Why does the spec have to matter? Well, because we all have different contexts when we want to buy a specific laptop. One person might be a designer, a coder, a programmer, or just a normal person working in the office doing documentation. You see, I have been using the M1 MacBook Pro for nearly two years now, and it has been absolutely fine for me to do creative work, from designing, to video editing, to photoshopping shopping, and many other things that I have been doing. And it presents me with minimal lag. And that is why I asked the question, why does spec have to matter? You see, we are living in a very fortunate world where laptops are a lot more affordable to the mass consumer. And we are living in a world where technology as well as chip advancement are sort of going forward slower than before. Therefore, if you are within the Apple ecosystem or you want to start out in the Apple ecosystem, be sure to do a thorough research before purchasing a piece of machinery from Apple, either it be a laptop or other things. Because like I said, when it comes to purchasing a new machine, it depends on different individuals. And with so many great options from the Apple ecosystem these days, it is really easy to waste your money for something that you don't really need or something that is just an absolute overkill. So we all have different contexts, we all have different ideas and situations on what we need. One might need just a normal MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, an M1 Pro, or they are waiting for the M2 MacBook Pro or the M2 Pro MacBook. However, despite all the different contexts, which I cannot represent all of you, of course, one thing still stands out, and that is the M1 MacBook Pro, which came out two years ago, is definitely still super usable. And it's for most people, they don't even need it. They just can go buy the M1 MacBook Air. And I am a living proof of that. I've been using this incredible machine for about nearly two years already. I have completed over 50 freelancing projects with my M1 MacBook Pro over the span of two years. And this project include video editing and photo editing, as well as other designs for my businesses. From visual effects to many other great and heavy intensive editing, my M1 MacBook Pro handled all of it. And so I have been a bit mad when I met a few of my acquaintances who are on tight budget and they are looking forward to buying a M1 Pro or they are waiting for an M2 Pro. And some of the people I know want to buy an M1 Pro for normal documentation work at the office and they are on tight budget. And that is the thing that is sort of sort of a pet peeve of mine when people are trying to buy something that is an absolute overkill for them. And so when I encounter those kind of people, friends or acquaintances, I always tell them one thing. And that is to list down all of their requirements of what they would need inside a piece of laptop or a piece of machine. And after time, after doing that, they realize that, oh, what I what they want to buy is more than what they need and, and it's an absolute overkill. So they ended up buying a laptop that is sort of a, a lower version of what they initially initially wanted to buy. And if you are one of those people, let me just tell you, the M1 MacBook Pro is still a good option. And right now, you can get it for such a low price. And in my country, which doesn't have an Apple store, it is sold for roughly less than a thousand dollars for a higher end spec. Of course, needless to say, the M1 MacBook Pro is not a perfect laptop. It is not a laptop without flaw. And sometimes there are lagging issues. But from my experience, I only encountered them when I do intensive visual effect or editing workflow. And that is when I sort of see the flaws inside the M1 MacBook Pro. But for documentation, when I was writing, writing my thesis, there was absolutely no lag whatsoever. It's perfect, I can multitask, I can do a lot of great things inside the laptop. And I might even say that if you want to buy this kind of laptop for documentation work, the M1 MacBook Air, which is sold for very, very cheap, or the M2 MacBook Air is still a viable option 
for you to pick. So, to summarize today's short video, if you are an owner of the M1 MacBook Pro like myself for example and you want to upgrade but you are on tight budget then assess your requirement and see if it is really worth it to go for that upgrade and if you're looking for a new laptop in the Apple ecosystem make sure you do your research properly on your necessities and with that hopefully this video has been reassuring if you are having if you want to upgrade or if you want to get into the Apple ecosystem because like I said the M1 MacBook Pro is still a great option and this has been Sam thank you guys for watching and we will see you all in the next video goodbye